We need the people in Whitehaven and Millham areas uh, and into the West Lakes to stay indoors and shelter until further notice. We particularly need people in the boot area to remain indoors. If anyone sees a man, and I'll give his description, he's in his 50s, thinning hair and a large build, please do not approach him. Contact us immediately using the 999 system. We currently are searching for a man by the name of Derek Bird. He's a 52-year-old man from Frislington who we believe was involved in the shooting. He was driving a Citroen Picasso car, but we've now recovered that, um, at, where it was found abandoned at Cockley Beck. Mr. Bird is still at large, and I plead to him, if he's out there and listening, please give yourself up, come and talk to us, and we can end this today. Derek just pulled alongside the car, and just the other side of the fence there, and, uh, and I saw the rifle of the gun, and I just threw myself on the floor of the car, and I just stayed there, basically, until, uh, I heard footsteps around, I got out, he'd driven off, so no, it was just a mad afternoon. It didn't strike me as the sort of person that would do something like that. I didn't even know he had guns. I was in the right-hand lane. As I pulled up, there was a car on the left-hand side of me. As I just glanced over, I saw this man with this huge gun on his lap. The windscreen had shattered, and I was starting, oh my God, you know, there's something serious here. So I just went through the red lights and just got out of that area as quickly as possibly could. I looked at him and he stared at me but he just had this blank expressionless face and uh, but my eyes got drawn straight down to this massive James Bond type sniper rifle he had. It, it, was, it was so big it looked like it looked like a, a prop, a comedy prop or something. And it was only when I looked back that where the car had been it had been obscuring this body, this woman that had fallen over. She was lying perpendicular across the pavement, straight down it, and two bags of shopping and a handbag on the floor. And I, I still didn't connect it. And I shouted, you know, are you okay? And but she didn't move, she didn't say anything. And a very bad breathing. And we were like shaking her saying, come on, keep breathing, keep breathing. They're coming, they'll be coming here soon. And the, sorry, about, <laughs> about a minute later, she just stopped breathing. And we were holding and she just died. Well, I was coming along this lane with the tractor about 11 and then this car was coming, driven like a madman, came along the road, no windscreen, and this guy was staring right at me. He was, he was looking absolutely mad. And really, uh, that was all I seen at that time. But then when things unfolded, I realized that uh, a guy was shot 200 yards up the road, somebody shot at and killed further down the other side. Then I realised what a lucky escape I had. Can't believe it. I was in his, right in his range for a good 10, 15 seconds and, uh, and he let me go. For whatever reason he had to shoot me and to shoot all the rest of them to, you know, to go on his, his little rampage, I don't think everybody's ever going to know. Uh, there'll be lots of speculation, lots of rumours here and there, but the only person that knows is Bertie. My officers and I are absolutely determined to get to the bottom of why this happened. However, it may not be possible to establish all the answers because we cannot speak to Derek Bird. We will piece together the events of yesterday. We have already a comprehensive and detailed picture. Derek Bird's body was located in Woodland near Boot at around 1.40 p.m. yesterday. No shots were fired by police officers. At this stage, the police believe he took his own life. Two weapons were recovered by police and are being examined by forensic experts. They are a shotgun and a .22 rifle fitted with a telescopic sight. The rules are strict already. Uh, of course, we have to do everything we can from stopping these dreadful uh, events, and uh, that is absolutely essential. But you can't legislate uh, to stop a switch flicking in someone's head uh, and for this dreadful sort of action to take place. Uh, I remember from my childhood, living very near Hungerford, the shock to that community when the events uh, took place there. It takes a long time to come to terms with what's happened, with the incredible loss of life, with the appalling randomness of what has taken place in terms of lives, of whether someone was cutting their hedge or walking their child or riding their bicycle, suddenly their lives being ended. The appalling shock that people in West Cumbria will feel it will take a long time to get over that. And now we remember before God 
those 12 persons who lost their lives this week. Jane Robinson, Michael Pike, Jamie Park, Gary Purdham, David Bird, Kevin Commons, Isaac Dixon, Kenneth Fishburne, Susan Hughes, James and Jennifer Jackson, and Darren Rucastle. Let us remember them all and all who have been affected by this tragedy in a minute of silence. One of my consultant colleagues who came down to help us last night said people need a story, they need a narrative. And I think that'll help now that actually people are piecing together a narrative of what happened. It won't explain the randomness, but it'll give some pattern, it'll, little bit of perhaps meaning to it all. But why? It's just a perfectly random thing to do with these were pure, pure random people.